Welcome to my channel. Thanks to everyone who's recently subscribed. I cannot believe how big and how quick the channel is growing and I do appreciate it. I set out to share my knowledge and just have some fun really. I love carpentry and joinery and building work and that's why I do it. So you recently saw me make some linings fit some linings in and it was a video about making those linings you know work through nicely and how to fit them in now I'm just going to do a little bit about how we've made the doors or how someone else has made the doors for us to make it cost effective it's like a case study why aren't I cutting these doors myself on site and why have I got them outsourced now instead of doing that myself so let's start with the doors they're MDF they're 22 mil they're very typical for loft door access, except we're using a typical cabinet hinge. These are a Blum hinge. We're also using a closing mechanism, which means that they don't have to have a handle. So it looks really sort of like modern as well. The architrave we've made, so we set the architrave flush with the doors with a nice equal space. In between the doors, we go with a full architrave all the way through. So instead of using a square edged MDF, we're using a 15 mil MDF, which has been primed as well from the same supplier. And that will all come through. So it will look much more like furniture or cabinetry instead of having a butt hinge. Also, they're quite reliable because you've got the adjustment. So we've got 17 of these doors on this job. We've got the pairs like this, and then we've got one single door. So we've got eight pairs and one single. So the reason why I don't buy the material, either pick it up or have it delivered, bring it onto site, and then start cutting it up, is because, well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, it takes a lot of time in labor, and it's quite messy. Second of all, the quality of what I can have produced in the factory is far better. And if you take, for example, I get them all pre-primed pre up like this, all of the MDF has got a preparation tape on it as well, which means that the edge and the front are exactly the same. When they're painted, there's no furring up. So there's no preparation for the painter. So what we're doing is eliminating work going forward. So as I say, it's a 22 mil MDF as well. It's quite a nice thick MDF. And I do think that by taking away the work from the site, we've got skills crisis, we've got skills shortages. I've only got a certain amount of days in the month, the week, the year to actually do my work. So I need to find other ways of buying in work so I can get my work finished to move on. So yes, we made all the linings the same. We made all the openings the same, the structural openings the same. So we were thinking about this back in the construction phase. We knew we'd have a lot of cupboards in these eaves. And we also knew that the best way to do this was, I said to Ed, Ed formed all the stru structures make sure we've got one piece of timber which fits exactly between the structural timbers which are behind here and here. That was the basis of the setting out. Then when we come to plasterboard, we've got similar bits of plasterboard to fit everywhere which is also quite good as well. When I made the linings, I just had to make eight heads, 16 legs for the doubles, and then one single head, and they were all exactly the same as well, so it was one lot of setting out and it's much more quick. So when I put my list in for the doors to get made, all I've got to do is order 17 doors, all exactly the same size. The doors even come drilled for the blums as well. Then we have this small 18 mil MDF sublining, which is also pre-drilled for the blum plates. So all that's done in the factory as well. So what we're doing is we're taking away hours and hours of work on site, and we're putting it into a factory where they can do it much more cost effectively. They can do better quality than we could do on site, even though we've got all the most expensive sorts. Let's go and have a look at some of these doors. So in here, Ed's got the doors. All right, Ed. All right. Yeah, and so you're just literally clipping the hinges in. Yeah, I mean, they're pre-drilled and they're absolutely perfect. So it's really easy just to get the hinges and chuck them in. And all the linings are pre-drilled as well, so it's just made Yeah, and made you've managed to go around and just put all of those linings in, so they're all ready, yeah? Yeah, all ready to go. I mean, the, the good thing about this is all of these doors, they're, they're perfect. They're just like furniture doors. Now, they've been spray-primed, so even their top coating, it'll be two coats of eggshell straight over the top of that, sprayed or rolled on site, it'll be absolutely fine. And we're not even drilling any of these hinges out, so even that takes a lot of time, makes yeah. a lot of mess, doesn't it? Well, you either need... a uh, 100 200 pound jig to do it nicely yeah or be really careful with everyone and if you are 
in this 20 mil, but when you're doing 18 mil, it's quite difficult when you're hand drilling them. You sometimes get the force in a bit, the head going through. And there's nothing more heartbreaking than making a door than having the, the edge of the force not coming through. But yeah, it's just made it so easy. I haven't literally had to do anything. I just bought a new Mafel saw and it's the top of the range best saw. Yeah. But I still wouldn't even, you know, it's yeah. not even close to what we can produce from, from, from cut rights. Yeah, because the thing is what you're doing is with a, with a saw, let's say we've got the sheets of MDF. So we'd get them in here or we'd, we'd work them outside. We'd get them up here, put them on the trestle. So that's quite heavy, 22 mil. MDF. Then we'd work out how many bits we could get from them. And even if we used a long rail to cut all the heights accurately, then we're going to set out our whips. So you might make a little jig, jig up or mm. something like that, mm. cut one off, move the jig, but you've only got to get it a millimetre or so out. Yeah. And it will sort of spiral on and spiral on. Yeah. And you know, with the best will in the world, it will, there'll be some which aren't as good as well, the others. It's human error as yeah, well. Exactly. One mis-me- mismeasurement. And also we've got really... Um, fine margins with the architrave and the doors. Mm. So if there is a door that's two mil out or yeah, a yeah. mil out, you will notice it because it's a four mil margin around everything with the architrave. Yeah, so it, exactly, yeah. Um, and the other thing as well, so in this order, what I'll do is, I'll, in this video, I'll, I'll put on the screen how much it worked out for each one of these doors to be made and sprayed and drilled for me to actually fit. So Ed's now fitting, what, two, four, six, eight doors. He's putting the hinges on eight doors. You'll go around and clip them all in. Yeah. Then you'll adjust them all. Then you'll put the architraves round to the spacers. So it's yep. a really nice process as well. And it doesn't take very long. So what Ed's doing is he's going to put these eight doors in, fix so four, four lots of cupboard fronts in no time at all because we're not having to mess around on site. So these two here, as I say, they're ready to go. So you could just pick a door up, for example. And with these blums, you cannot go wrong. You just literally clip them on. And then it's just about adjusting them. So it's, you know, how easy is that? Yeah. I mean, it's like the easiest thing you've ever done. There's no measuring, no marking, there's no pencil marks anywhere. And it's, uh, it's the way to go. So in this order, we also had, the, as I say, the 15 mil MDF panels made for that. Yep. The offcut of that, we've used the 15 mil MDF to do our apron lining around the stairs. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also used the 18 mil offcuts for other jobs as well. So. What, we've, what we're doing is putting all that stuff together, eliminating all that process on site, and we're just charging the labour to fit it, which is really nice as well. So I'll also put how much I'm charging, uh, print it on the screen now, for fitting each one of these doors as well. Just to give you an idea, I think that paints some context. Yeah. It? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, what do you think about all this, Ed, all this kind of like automation that we do? I think, yeah, I think it's obviously everything's changing and it's adapting to the times, but the price of things and the cost of things and this job was on a on a price we mm. priced up ages ago mm. things have changed mm. things are different mdf prices has changed whatever mm. you can't really predict this kind of mm. thing um and for standardized things like this i think it's great we've got to build some quirky mdf desk in in the yeah. east there that probably cut rights can't do because yeah. that's it's working to a, a funny shape yeah you just got a bit that, that, that's the sort of job you want to bring the material exactly. on site yeah. cut it up but that's where you should invest your time isn't it you Definitely, shouldn't invest yeah. your time in repetitive processes like making 17 doors yeah, you don't you don't you don't put doors in a house standard doors and make them no you, you go, no. To, go to Howlands and buy yeah, them exactly, yeah that's it, why it, because it's ridiculous yeah exactly you, you never do it exactly okay so you're going to get on and do that we go for the gone rat step two get some good some food in you step three Grow high about what you want to be. Step four. Everybody just do your thing. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Set your affirmations, aspirations. I got shit to do, the oh. aftermath of preparation. <laughs> good food, good mood, oh. blood in circulation. One step at a time, yeah, that's how you make it. Set a goal you control and the steps you take them. I try to pick one thought, have some concentration. And if I make a mistake, it's called education. I try to do this every day, call it replication. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, 